Here on BBC One Wales, we catch up with Roy Noble's progress in the final edition of the BBC Diet programme. BBC Diet Programme. This week, in the final programme of the series, we have advice that will not only help you lose weight, but will also help to make your families slim and fit. And we'll be showing you how to ensure that the weight you've already lost stays lost forever. <laughs> I've now lost 16 pounds in four weeks, so I can get rid of this as my spare tyre. <laughs> ah. So load up my mind and a few other places as well. And more help with getting rid of those spare tires. Have you sweet tooth, but still want to lose weight? I have some very thing for you this week. Some delicious, low-calorie ice cream. At the very beginning of the series, we had a guest on the programme who's now been following the BBC diet for the last five weeks. This week, she's returned to let us see the results. Janice Long. <laughs> How have you been getting on these last five weeks? I'm really proud of myself because I've managed to lose over a stone. Oh, which fantastic is, is really great news. news. Yeah. How have you done that? Well, really, by eating very healthily, uh, reducing fat intake and, and what have you, and eating lots of pulses. Have you changed things. your diet um, hugely? Not, not really. Uh, I tell you what we have done. We've bought a, a wok and a pressure cooker, which has, has helped, and we, we sort of stir-fry things very quickly, and, but really sort of concentrating on eating very, very healthily. And uh, some exercise, which I'll talk about later. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, when you were last here, we discussed that people we thought would have more success mm. on a diet if they prepared. And part of the preparation would be to write down their reasons for wanting to lose weight in mm. the first place. What were your reasons? Well, really, because I didn't feel very comfortable at all. Um, obviously, being pregnant, you know, you're carrying a lot of excess uh, baggage around uh, with you, and I just didn't feel right. And I felt as though it was slowing me down. I felt as though my metabolism was a lot slower. I didn't feel as energetic. I didn't feel as though I had as much sort of get up and go. So I just didn't feel comfortable in general. Um, the other thing was, I think... Uh, you can lack confidence when you're used to being a certain size oh, yes. and you put on an awful lot of weight. You lack confidence yes. and you sit in a room and you, you think, you know, <laughs> for an hour before you stand up and go to the loo because you think everybody's looking at you or whatever. Uh, so that was another reason. Desperate to get back into the 501. That's an incentive, um, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, I, you know, I never lived without them. Well, we uh, also talked about a contract. You made a contract mm, with, mm, your dis with yourself mm. to... How have you done with that? Well, pretty well. I'm, I'm well on my way. I'm, I'm probably uh, two-thirds of the way there now. Uh, of, you know, getting to, to the nine stone. How about your reward? What reward have you mm. designated? It's a, it's a real treat. I mean, it's really flippant. <laughs> but I've always wanted a red dress. And uh, I promised myself one, and then Paul uh, said to me that he would treat me to a red dress if I get down to the nine stone. So I'm going to wait for that now. And are you going to stay on the diet? Um, yes, I'm going to, you know, stick to, to, to eating healthily and uh, doing lots of exercise and running around. What's your advice then to somebody trying to lose weight? I think really, um, don't do it under pressure. Don't have somebody sort of breathing down your neck telling you that you've got to do it and, and you know, go out and do it now. Do it for yourself. Do it the way you want to do it and um, take your time. there. But remember, preparation is the key to successful slimming. All our audience, and that includes me, have been having the same success following the BBC diet. But we've been at it a week less than Janice, as we spent the first week concentrating on that preparation. Now then, Brian, tell me, what were your reasons really for wanting to lose weight? Well, I've been 
putting on weight. In fact, I put on two stone in the last few years. So the yeah. weight graph is going in the wrong direction. I found it's quite embarrassing in business and difficulty buying new clothes as well. New clothes. Mm. I see. That's bad, that, is it? No, it's very good. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you, um, you know, have these helped you now to lose weight, oh, the, those indeed. reasons that you have? Oh, they have indeed, yes. I've lost uh, about 17 pounds, actually. Have you well done, you? Mm. Uh, 17 pounds. So the old suit is getting closer. I'm going to get one on the weekend. Oh, <laughs> a nice little incentive for you there, a little <laughs> reward. Now then, Sharon, Sharon, your reasons. You can tell us. Nobody's listening. Look. Sheer vanity, basically. Uh -huh. I really wanted to get into one of those great short skirts for the summer without it looking like a pair of tree trunks sprouting from <laughs> Yes, yes, I know the feeling. Uh, yes, but you want to go branches either side as well, I mean. <laughs> yes, and did you manage that? Well, are you on the track? I bought this about oh. a month ago. You tease, you tease. When it was dead tight. Yes. And I tried it on this morning. It looks like I'm going to need a smaller size soon. So. Oh, well done. It's getting there. It's getting there. And you were able to do the zips up as well before long. <laughs> oh, yes. Now then, Dennis. Dennis, you're holding something there. Now, we have been talking about little incentives, haven't we? We have, yes. Have you had incentives and rewards and little contracts that you made with yourself? Yes, I have. I was very conscious, you see, because I had a set of weighing scales in the house, which, although I knew I was too strong overweight, I accepted the weight as being accurate. Yeah. But it's, I've since come to realise that I'm more than three and a half stone overweight. Oh. So my incentive, obviously, was to get as much of that weight off as possible. Mm. And my reward, as you can see, to make sure <laughs> I get right now, I said a computerised weighing scale. Computerised posh ones? It's a funny thing, you see, because only by accident this morning I found a pair of trousers I haven't seen for over five years, never ever worn from brand new, and I could get into them this morning. So what better incentive than to keep on dieting? Well done, yes. I've got a pair like that herringbone. They haven't seen the light of day at all yet. <laughs> <laughs> now, Anne. I hesitate to ask what you're holding there. That is your contract or is it this, a reward? No, this is my reward. A reward? Yes. yes. I reached middle age and I thought I must do something different and I wanted to learn to scuba dive. Ah. And I wasn't fit enough, so I've lost weight. It takes a lot of fitness to scuba dive, <laughs> yes. does it? Yes. You've got a lot of training before you can actually start. Are you into it yet? Do you practice no, in a local pool or something? No, I or? haven't lost enough weight yet. Not yet? Not yet. Oh, but yes, I've, lost, I've lost 10 pounds. 10 pounds with there. Yes. The old swimsuit will be ready. Or is yes. it one of those wetsuits that you get into? Well, the uh, first off swimsuit. First off, yes, yes. <laughs> Weather will come along with this. Yes. Now, next to you, Anne, of course, there is a gentleman, and I use the term loosely. <laughs> no, I don't think he wants to lose a lot of weight himself. It's Dr. Alan Marion Davis, medical expert, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yes. You don't have to stand, Alan. You know, it makes you look short. <laughs> <laughs> I've been losing weight worrying about whether or not our guinea pigs would lose weight, but um, they've, they've all uh, done extremely well. Yes, now then, you're a, a sort of medical quantity surveyor here. What's the key, really, <laughs> to successful sim swimming? I think the thing is, really, to choose a diet which actually fits in with your, with your normal lifestyle. I think if yeah. you start going for a, a faddish, fancy sort of crash diet, the trouble is, OK, you may lose weight, but as soon as you stop it, you'll start putting it on again and you'll get into a sort of yo-yo situation. Everybody familiar with the yo-yo yeah, situation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm. So uh, the great thing about the BBC diet is it's, it's, a sen it's basically sensible eating, and what you're really doing is dieting for life, literally for life. For life, well done. What about those then who have some difficulty losing the weight in the first place or come to a blockage or a wall like I have, for instance, in some cases? What advice can you give them? The advice there is to hang on in there, you know, be patient, it takes a bit of time. Sometimes your metas metabolism is a bit slow <laughs> catching up and you will get a sort of plateau. But if you just don't, don't cut down even more on the calories, just stick to your standard calorie reduction and you'll eventually get through that plateau after maybe two or three, four weeks. And you could try taking a bit of exercise as well to break through the plateau. Yeah. And for someone now like myself, really, who, you know, who finds that the weight is falling off him, <laughs> and he's begin oh, beginning to worry about it, what advice there? <laughs> don't get cocky. <laughs> <laughs> No, the trouble is that sometimes you might think, oh, this is easy, I can take it off just like that, you know. So yes. you start uh, having a few things that you shouldn't really have, and, of course, you, you get into the yo-yo again, you start putting it on again. So just stick to the sensible eating, choosing things. Basically, you're, it's less fat, less sugar, more fibre. Simple as that, and that's a diet for life. Less fat, less sugar, more fibre. <laughs> problem areas for people wanting to lose weight is the shopping. The temptations I know myself are often too difficult to resist. But sensible shopping is not just the key to ourselves losing weight, but also to keeping our families slim and fit. Janice, 
you've got some items of shopping you'd like to discuss to see if they're suitable for children. And here with the answers is Helen Housen, nutritionist with Heartbeat Wales, who's been with us throughout the series, offering advice on what we ought to be eating. Janice, I see you've got a rather healthy shopping basket there. I hope so, I hope so. But there are certain things that I want to ask. I mean, for example, Helen, um, something like uh, skimmed milk which I always buy, and at the moment I'm breastfeeding. But what about in the future? Is Fred going to be able to, right. to cope with something like that? I think it's important to note that breastfeeding is the best start for babies, and we should try and maintain it as, as long as possible. When it comes on to milk and babies later, mm. essentially skim milk has the fat removed and therefore has less calories. So as long as your child is eating properly when he's weaned, there's no reason why we shouldn't be looking to alternatives. But as a general guideline, under two-year-olds, we tend to say, stick to the normal milk. Uh -huh. For the cal extra calories. Right, yeah. just in case they yeah. tend to be fat yeah. eaters or something mm. like that. Between two and five-year-olds, there's, there's no reason, as long as they're eating well, that they shouldn't go into semi-skim milk. Okay. And then after five, then there's no reason, if you're having a skim milk, why they shouldn't eat that. What so. about um, other low-fat things? Things like, um, I've got some uh, low-fat cottage cheese here, uh, a low-fat spread, and some, some yoghurt. I mean, what about those Right, things? I think it's important to note that um, fatty deposits in the arteries uh, happens very early in children, uh -huh. in childhood, really. And so, therefore, it's important to remember to establish good eating habits mm. as early as possible. Right. So, there's no reason why they shouldn't have low-fat products such as that. Again, as long as they're eating well and the calories are there. You from say other foods over five of foods. as well, so... Yes, that's right. I mean, mm. you've got a variety of foods there in your basket yeah. that they can get uh, calories from, yes. you know, in... in Form. But what about um, energy? I mean, people assume that, you know, in order for the child to have energy, they've got to have lots and lots of sugar. So something like honey or, or these things. That's, that's right. And sugar giving energy and the energy food is a bit of a fallacy. You yes. can get energy from all sorts of foods. And it's far better to get your energy from a variety of foods which give us other important nutrients like minerals and vitamins, which are important to grow in children. Well, my mum used to put two teaspoonfuls of sugar in tea <laughs> just unnecessarily, so I That's know right. That. I mean, we yeah. establish eating ha habits and our tastes mm. very early on, and I think it's important to try and establish good eating habits from a very early age. What about these snacks here, Helen? We have chocolate biscuits, crisp popcorn, all sorts of stuff, sweeties. Most mums would be tempted to give their kids that sort of thing at some point or other. What do you say about that? Again, it's important, really, to try and encourage children to have a good, balanced meal yes. at meal times mm -hmm. and to really discourage snacking in any form. Mm -hmm. Now, inevitably, we, we all have children and we know the problems of trying to pacify them. Uh, so, therefore, we have to look for alternatives and there, there are alternatives. Why not give them fingers of uh, egg sandwiches or banana sandwiches? There's nothing wrong with bread and, and why not fill them? There's the sticks of celery and carrots, mm. you know, and again, if we keep some of those in the fridge, that's always useful. And fruit, obviously. And if they can't manage a whole apple or orange, why not segment them? Are it's people easier. programmed to be fat or thin, Helen? Only a very, very small minority of people are actually programmed. For the majority of children uh, who are born to, if you like, fat adults, then there is a small tendency for them to become fat. But it's basically because they acquire the same eating habits. Yeah. They tend to eat the same kind of foods, and so therefore they develop So uh, it is fatness. possible to, to keep our children from becoming fat adults? It is, and it boils down to very simple guidelines, the guidelines we've been given throughout the programme. Less fat, less sugar, and eat more fibre. One of those people who tear through the main course to get to the dessert. I am. I've had a Welsh international cap, you know, for overeating. But it's a tricky area if you to lose weight, that is. Now, but Anton here, you've got some good news for us, haven't you? Very good news, in fact. Hit me with it. 
Ice cream. Ice cream? I thought that was happening. Made with yogurt. Oh, I see. In fact, low-fat yogurt. Right. Let me take you through the recipe here. Right, you are. Fine. First of all, the ingredients. We got low-fat yogurt. Low-fat yogurt. We got mango. Mango, the old mango, mango fair indico. <laughs> exactly. I mango see. Mango puree. I, I know what they say about mango. It takes two to mango. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you lead, I'll follow your steps. I'll, I'll go ahead. Right. But in case you can't get mangoes, use anything else. All right. Like raspberries, strawberries, or any kind of purees. Any kind of soft fruit. Exactly. Or purees. Oh, I see. Purees. Yeah. Egg yolk. Right. Ten bit of sugar. Sugar? If you want to, you don't have uh. to, just in case. And then a few garnishes here. What you do, take a nice mixer. Yeah. You can move it over the side there. Mix it. Mix it for a couple of minutes. Very well. Pull the bubbles back. That's right. Yes. And then, what I have done here is boiled some sugar. Water and sugar for about three to four minutes. Just reduce it down. It looks like syrup, doesn't it? It's almost like a syrup, that's oh. right. Now, slowly, you mix the syrup into the egg yolk. In fact, the sugar syrup is slightly warm. Slightly warm, yeah. And you have to mix it until the egg yolks and the sugar syrup becomes cold. How do you know that then? You just guess it or what? Uh, you just feel it. Oh, feel it. Oh, I see. Right. Cooking is not really with feelings, you know. Feeling. Good feeling, yes. Exactly. Yes. exactly. I'm getting the feel of it, yes. At that stage, you then mix the yogurt yes. into the eggs. Looks nice and smooth, isn't it? Nice and smooth and very, very fluffy. Yeah. The mango puree. How do you do the puree then? Or puree? You, again, use a liquidizer yeah. or Thief by hand. Oh. It's quite easy actually. Is it? It yeah. You mix it all together and it becomes very creamy looking. It's a kind of a beige colour, doesn't it? Exactly, because of the mangoes. Yeah. Now, if necessary, a bit of sugar, but I don't think necessary because the mangoes are nice and dry. Right. Now, let me explain you, Roy. That's obviously low fat yogurt. Yeah. If you think that double cream has 48% of fat, 48%. 48%. Ah. Then we have the Greek yogurt, which has 10% of fat. These are the substitutes here now, is it? Exactly. Ah, right. Instead of cream, you actually can use either the Greek yogurt. 10%, or you said? 10%. Yeah. Or indeed the fromage blanc or fromage frais. Fromage? That's cheese, isn't it? It's cheese, fresh cheese. In you fact, put that in ice cream? In fact, it has nothing to do with cheese at all. Oh, isn't it? It's just so cold. Yeah, I dropped French fairly early in my career. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the advantage is you also can use it for savouries. Yes. For cooking, yeah. because it doesn't split, oh. or for desserts. So you actually use yogurt here or one of those substitutes. Yes. Now, what I have done, because it takes a bit of time to freeze it, yes. I actually done it just while you were talking before. Oh, oh, I oh. put it in the ice maker. They don't have to use these machines, do they? You don't have to. Oh, it's a bit expensive, this machine. It could be expensive. Yeah. Why don't you just put that mixture in the deep freezer yeah. and you mix it from time to time. Right. You get a wonderful result. Oh, too. great. That's now, good. shall we have a go and uh, try it? We're on the old test pile a bit now. Researching. Researching. Oh, yes. I'm doing this for the good of mankind, of course. <laughs> Don't, that should be okay. Should be okay. Should be okay. Remember? Oh, you devil, I do. Oh, no dear, oh, dear. No fat whatsoever. Marvellous, isn't it, really? Wonderful. Oh, fleshy and fruity, of course, the old mango, isn't it? Fresh and fruity, <laughs> that's right. Now, while I'm dressing it, in fact, I also use a hot spoon. I drop some of my ice cream in your bowl. And, uh, yes, you have, actually. That means it's mine afterwards. It's yours, exactly. <laughs> Nobody can touch this. Not at all. <laughs> I'm going to garnish this over here. Yeah. Oh, don't move. <laughs> I do that all the time. Do you? When I'm washing up, yes. Which one do you prefer? Oh, the big one, the, the big, big one. one. Yes, Good. I don't mind. So. <laughs> I'm going to garnish with some fresh fruits. Lovely. Bit of mint. You like to make it look pretty, don't you? It's so important. And then, of course, the final touch, a bit of icing sugar. Oh, the attractive plate as well. Like the plate. tiny bit on the mint. Marvellous. And no licking the plate. You see, now here you've got a... <laughs> not at all, of course. <laughs> here you've got a lovely, soft, creamy-looking ice cream made with low-fat yogurt. It looks marvellous. It tastes even better. Can I, uh, I make a deal with you? 
I'll help with the washing up if I have just a little dollop on this. Please, go ahead. You... Oh. What a gent you are. What a gent you are. I was always told the same about the Swiss, you know. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Take to this, I'm done. <laughs> Do you remember when we were last on this programme together? All yes. those promises we made about what we'd do when we'd lose weight. And what did you promise? You promised that if you lost a stone, yeah. you'd write to the holiday programme, yeah? Well, the first bit's done, the stone's lost, but I'm not quite ready yet for the old Costa del Sol. Firm tummy I need for going round the old bathing pool. I like a man with a belly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're the first to say that. You're the first to say that. I'm so grateful. Oh, good, <laughs> good. Well, you weren't doing too bad yourself. No, You've been practising. Well, I've been doing some exercise. I've, I've been sort of dashing around here, there and everywhere, and yeah. I've been cycling and having a go at the rowing machine. So, yeah. But you're used to it. Were you good in school, that kind of thing? Yeah, and I like sport, you see, and I think that's really important. Oh, me and I turned into a hide in the changing room. I wasn't very good at it. So it <laughs> spreads into the family, you see. Yeah. I influence them. That's bad, isn't it, influencing them that fact, Alan? Well, no, yeah, that's quite. I mean, you've got to remember that, uh, that your habits are... Uh, you, 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 yes. <laughs> I'm all right, really. I'm all right, really. <laughs> yes, I mean, you, ha you hand these habits down, you see, so you don't take exercise properly, and your kids won't take exercise properly. So <laughs> what you've got to do is remember the, the, the three Fs, you see. <laughs> three Fs. Three Fs. Um, yeah. Exercise has got to be frequent, right? Frequent. It's got to be, frequent. It's got to be friendly, <laughs> yes, and it's got to be physical. Wow. Wow. <laughs> There's a fourth one. There's a fourth one. What's that? What's that? Family. Get your family involved. Yeah. Family and friends. Make it nice and pally. And if you do that and keep it up every day, well, not every day, but you know, every day or so, yeah. make it make exercise part of your life because it's literally exercise for life. Right. I see. So there's five left then altogether. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Frequent. Frequent. Family, Frequent. Friends. Yeah. Physical. Yeah. Fa fa fairly, fairly often. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that one then. <laughs> right. That's good advice, Alan. What's it again? <laughs> <laughs> exercise for life. Exercise for life. Right. Got fun. Exercise is one of the four key points of the BBC diet. The other three are reducing fat and sugar and increasing fiber. Terry, Gregory, Jennifer, Gillian and Eileen are five of the slimmers we've followed since the beginning of the series. And they're going to be telling us exactly where the BBC diet has been working for them. Terry, how have you got on? Well, I've done very well at the moment. The weight is falling off me, um, but it's the calorie awareness that um, it's has brought it home to me when you consider that all of that lettuce there is equal to that one little piece of cheese goodness me which was one of my failings <laughs> and uh, the butter equally exactly the same as all those all uh, the cucumbers. cucumbers so you're a cucumber freak now oh right? yes that's right um, how much have you lost one stall three pounds that's wonderful, isn't it? Gregory, what have you learnt? Well, I think what I've learnt really is think before you shop. Yes. I used to dive into the supermarket and go for the things I'd liked. Yeah. The chunks of meat, the pork pies, the pâtés, all that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. 
And now I really think fat. I find I'm going for the low-fat yogurts, for the low-fat cheeses, the lean meat, things like that. And how much have you lost? Well, 19 pounds now. Goodness, that's fantastic. Jennifer, you're a school meals lady, so you should know better, shouldn't you? Yes, I'm ashamed to say that. <laughs> I know all the things they've told us in the BBC But diet. you didn't make them work for you. But at the back of my mind, I thought if I didn't admit there was fat and sugar in the sweeties I liked, and I love sweets. So what are you doing now? So what the diets told me are there are alternatives to help my sweet tooth. Uh -huh. I've been eating lots more fresh fruit mm -hmm. and things like the low-fat from ash fruit. From ash fruit, yes, and, it's, it's um, wonderful. And low-fat yogurts and things, which I yes. find do satisfy my sweet tooth, but not Not they haven't got the calories, yes. Gillian, how about you? Well, the thing I was amazed about is hidden sugars. Um, in the ketchups. This is all processed food. This is all processed, yeah. all canned soups, mm -hmm. um, drinks. There's, in the fizzy pop, there's 10 teaspoons of sugar. Good yes. can. Yes. But yes. there are alternatives. There's the reduced sugar j uh, jams, the reduced beans, and also now with the uh, sugar-free hot chocolate drinks. Goodness, course, I didn't even know that existed. Yes, it's very nice too. And of course, uh, the fresh fruit. And how much have you lost? I've lost £16. Great. Eileen, I see you have faced with lots of fibre there. Yes, indeed. I, I've discovered fibre, and I've discovered that it's sort of filling and satisfying, but it's not fattening. And the proof of that is, is seen, can be seen here, because in all of those apples, 10 pounds of apples, there are the same number of calories that are in this bowl of chocolates. Yes. And whilst I could eat that in about two minutes flat, I could never eat uh, an awful lot of the apples. So that's all very filling, all that fibre, as well as being healthy, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. And the sweetness one can resolve with the natural dried fruits and the figs etc and carrots are really sweet they help your sweet tooth how much have you. you lost i've lost one stone three pounds goodness that's fantastic well the one thing i've really learned that's stuck in my mind on the diet here is the amount of calories in simple alcoholic drinks like one unit of alcohol in the form of a glass of wine a half pint of beer or lager or a, a unit of, of spirits with mixers in is 100 calories, about 100 calories. So you have to be careful, drink mineral water or low calorie drinks if you're trying to lose weight. So the message of the BBC diet is less fat, less sugar, more fiber. You pull in? Yes, I'm pull it. <laughs> Look at this. Since the audience and I went on a diet four weeks ago, to the day after our second program, We've lost over 800 pounds of weight between us. And that's 800 pounds of this stuff, Alan, isn't it really? This stuff here, look at it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of that then for a weight loss? 800 pounds? I've heard 750 of it is yours. I got to be careful I don't recycle you as a couple of carrot shredders and a colander. <laughs> You've still got a stone to go, fat so, uh, thin so. <laughs> the work that accompanies the series is called the BBC Diet and contains our guidelines, our diet plans and all of Anton's lovely recipes. Good luck in your fight against the flab. Bye-bye. <laughs>